routine. I'd say got so used to it, and that's what I was doing. You know, the last night I wasn't going to sleep two hours, but I set my alarm and I woke up. So I thought, well, I'll just carry on writing. Then my body was was primed. It was, that's what it was there for. It's all it had done all week was to wait, be awake, riding or sleep, and it was just natural. It's that hunter gatherer instinct again, isn't it? We started taking him to some races at Thetford and he was always messed up all his starts. He'd always be the start off the last off the start line, he'd lose his pedals, etc. <laughs> Freedom! <laughs> up here, isn't it? Oh no, it is down, it is down, it is down. It's down. <laughs> oh dear, not the size <laughs> But he, he was really enjoying it and he was just moving through the pack each time. Um, and that went on for a couple of years if my memory serves me correct. And then there was the low, there wasn't really much mountain biking in East Anglia at all. Um, so we'd heard about the British cycling talent team. So we took him over to another region and um, he was trialed for that and he got onto the talent team. And then that really started all his, his serious racing. Day one, it's about half seven. Having dinner. So you can see over there, you can see Wales in the far distance, probably heading to later. I've got the whole hill to myself, apart from the sheep, of course. That's why we do it. No, it was, was fine. I, I never thought the food, food thing would be a big issue. Um, because essentially, I mean, It'll make the bikes heavier, but then I thought, well, you know, people do expeditions to the Antarctic and stuff, and they drag all their food with them. And people go bike touring, they carry loads of shit they don't need with them. So it stings the legs a bit. We're going to wake ourselves this morning. Hopefully this is the last climb for Bristol. Bristol. To Wales. There she is over there. That means more hills. In those days you didn't have like all the balance bikes and his grandfather made a pole thing that we fitted to the back of the saddle so at least I could try and balance him on it. But even then he just he didn't like riding or didn't want to learn to ride his bike or couldn't learn to ride his bike. Good morning, EB Giro day three, going uphill again. So deep in the heart of mid Wales. Um, rode over the military ranges last night, ended up camping up there. Finally got my feet dry after yesterday. And guess what? Yep, straight across the middle of it. Feet are soaked. And the hardest bit was making sure I, when I got to a town, I put my head down and I went through it and I didn't look at anything for it. Because there's too much temptation. Hopefully I come around soon. The struggle continues. Just been chasing my tail all day with energy. Feeling pretty flat. Hoping it's a bad day. 
the valley and unfortunately I'm going up there it's steep and I'm tired so uh, yeah, just plow on and hopefully the legs come good later Josh is he, he didn't have the speed um, but he had the endurance and that was obvious yeah. that at a very early age he had that endurance Good morning. This is up day four on the GB Duro. The last climb in Wales. Out of Langochlan. I slept four hours last night. Um, only meant to sleep three. I went to bed just before midnight. I was super tired, so I just lay at the side of the road in my sleeping bag, which was a mistake because it was freezing. And then I overslept and didn't wake up my alarm at three o'clock, but obviously needed the sleep. So yeah, looking forward to getting this climb done. Looking forward to get back into, into England. Not that I dislike Wales, it's just uh, I've got 80 miles of flat, or relatively flat, coming up. Um, so yeah, get some energy in the tank, make sure I'm rehydrated, and then get ready for the Pennines. There's England. Manchester in the distance. That's Manchester. Pretty intense to be honest, pretty stressful. There's loads of people and traffic which I've not been used to the last few days. And uh, loads of high buildings. Obviously all the smells of the the restaurants and the takeaway places I went through at lunchtime. Um, made me quite hungry. Um, I really fancied a curry, but as it happens, I've got a uh, vegetable tikka curry, so I thought I'd have that for lunch. Surviving. Cars still. All or nothing really. And I think I'd better go for it. Let's see. Um, so the, the tops weren't too bad. Um, the wind was killer, but it's downhill and not moving. So I currently have a sachet of porridge down my shirt while it cooks. I managed to make myself a nice coffee. Filtered some water out the uh, handy river running down the road. And I need to see if I can resurrect myself. Because so obviously if I take any help from anyone, that means a dry place. Um, or some food. Uh, that means I'm out of the race. So hopefully this porridge will sort me out. Or a bit of sunshine, that'd be better. That'd really sort me out. These are a thousand <laughs> calories. I think I was getting very hungry. I was just forcing food down myself. I had um, these cookies that I've been eating. They're too And then I had a bit of a mental breakdown. Let's see what happens. And then got going. Then had a mental breakdown again. Yes, yeah, rug out of my bivvy. Just packed everything when it was wet. And then said to myself, got a few bees in. I need to eat, keep moving, and I'll be all right. I think that's yeah, the thing I missed the most. I was alright, just the descent. Oh. It's fully self-sufficient. Just goes to the toilet. That would solve a lot of problems. It's somewhere warm. You could sleep in there if you had to. You could take a dump. You wouldn't have to carry loo roll. You'd get water. That would save a lot of problems. But at it, as it is, I'm sat under a, a railway bridge. It's a train station in the middle of Yorkshire where no one ever goes. And the rain is sideways. And there's a river down the road. And I'm desperate for shit. 
<laughs> I can't go. So I've got to hold it. Until the sun comes out. Which isn't going to be till tomorrow. So, uh, yeah. I guess that's the real meaning of ultra endurance. To rescue a stupid mountain biker. Not even a mountain biker. Bike packer, whatever I am. Oh, well, still here under the bridge. I'll save him. Because it got too cold yeah. and too wet and we're doing something stupid. Brutally honest. Keep going. Yeah. Having said that, <laughs> the toilet issue got too much and I just had to go. Which was um, probably why I felt a bit weird for the last few days. Keep going. Um, I'll spare you the details, but it's definitely a weight off my chest and uh, I stopped shivering as well, which is nice. So um, I guess I'll have to keep going. Crack on and uh, keep going. See what the day brings. That's one less stress, I suppose. Now it's just the weather, but that's going to get drier at some point. I've just got to keep going. That's all I can do. I saw a pack of wolves, ravenous wolves, last night, which came to rip me apart. It's massively hallucinating, it's just a couple of deer. Hey, it's Appleby. This is the one we've heard been quite a long time. Just here, it's Scotland. It looks the same. Yeah, you're right. They're brand new white, fresh socks. Feet are gonna feel amazing today, which is pretty good because they've been literally going rotten the last few days. It's the little things in life. Oh, good morning. This is where I just woke up in Scotland. Morning of day must be six, I think, and uh, quite a big sleep. It's taken a little while to get going this morning, but I needed it. It's going to be a nice day today. I can feel it. Less wind. It was really calm last night. It's beautiful. Found some uh, rare Scottish zebras in the hills. <laughs> Stuff you see. I don't think I'm here this night. living the Scottish dream. Pretty hungry so I stopped for breakfast and as you can probably tell by the lovely head attire I'm not the only hungry thing around here. So uh, Scotland has a reputation to uphold and uh, it is doing so very well. I've got midges in my bloody coffee. Check my phone, seen as I had signal for the first time in ages, right next to the last, and uh, found out that on the uh, WhatsApp group, I sent a few photos back that Angus has pulled out, which is uh, pretty kind actually. I was quite enjoying the, um, you know, race racing him, and uh, I was expecting him to be pushing me all the way. So, um, yeah, a bit, a bit of a shame to be honest. So I hope it's all right. Sunset tomorrow, so I want to be done. I want to sit down and have a meal. I want to have a, a shower. I want to use the bathroom. Go to the bushes. It's beautiful up here. You hear that? Nothing. So quiet. in the world, it's got a 
Collins. So I feel like I've been developed more and I've lost my way a bit in races the last few years, but this has changed me. And I've, not, I've always been a decent racer. I can do it here, but the mental game is so much more in these. And this has focused me. And I got there a little bit towards the end of Dubai last year. But now I know I can do it and I've done it right. It's, it's not over yet. It's, um, it's not a done deal. It's not finished. Um, still got to think about myself. Um, look after myself, look after the bike. I mean, it might be raining. I might be pushing my bike up a steep, stony, slippery hill, but it's a beautiful place. Even the sun's trying to come out. I've been totally self-reliant for a whole week. You know, I'd, if it was really weird being inside again and using the taps and, you know, going in a shop, it seems so weird using a um, you know a bathroom or you know washing your hands or shelter from the rain I've just been outside in the elements the whole time I said it before and I'll say it again Scotland the most beautiful country in the world Start. Last dirt road and it's all tarmac and money downhill. I get there slowly. It's pretty cool actually, it's not a bad way to finish. Here is summer night. Look at that sunset, an amazing dirt track. Good sounds to some of my ears. That's some chocolate biscuits.